हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम नमस्कार मुझे उम्मीद है कि आप लोग बहुत खुश हैं और बहुत अच्छे से अपनी प्रिपरेशन कर रहे हैं सो विद दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद न्यू सेशन एंड न्यू टॉपिक द न्यू टॉपिक इज एक्सटर्नल सेक्टर सो वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद द एक्सटर्नल सेक्टर एक्सटर्नल सेक्टर राइट Why we need to study the external sector? From the examination perspective, you will find one question every year. So it is very natural that we will study this topic. Why we need to study? Otherwise, because India is an open economy. What is the meaning of open economy? Open economy means that India, Indian economy has a lot of transactions with the outside world. In the form of import of goods, in the form of export of goods, in the form of Uh, movement of capital like FDI, FII. So we are now integrated with the world economy, right? So that is why we need to study the external sector or the foreign sector. If we see historically, immediately at the time of independence, we decided that we will have the least possible interaction with the outside world. The question arises: Why that decision was made? Why we decided? that we should be a closed economy what is the meaning of closed economy closed economy means the economy which has a rare transaction with the outside world so we decided that we will be a closed economy at the time of independence the reason was very simple that because before the independence before the independence we had a very bad experience uh, because of the foreign trade so you must be knowing that in the history East India Company started its trading with the India, and soon it converted itself into the colonial power. So Indians got the experience that just because of the foreign trade, this East India Company it converted India into its own colony. So if it want to be free, then we should have the we should have the closed economy. We should have the least interaction with the outside world. This was the thought at the time of independence. slowly slowly we liberalized our economy in 1991 the world realities changed we realized that we cannot we cannot be uh, independent of the world we have to be integrated with the world so in 1991 liberalization privatization and globalization reforms started and at that point of time the economy got opened so the importance of external sector enhanced from that time onwards right so now we are going to start with the concepts of the external sector what will be the coverage of this session in this session we will be covering the uh, basics of the external sector balance of payment this is very very crucial this is very very important from the examination point of view also in this balance of payment we will discuss about the current account we will discuss the concept of trade balance invisibles concept of uh, current account deficit etc right then capital account then errors and omission and then reserves reserves means basically foreign exchange reserves foreign exchange reserves so first let us see the circular flow of income concept i hope that you have you must have gone through my national income chapter in the national income chapter i discussed the concept of circular flow of income so in this session i am just giving you the reference of the circular flow of income i am not going to discuss this concept in detail the circular flow of income this this concept we can uh, see at the different levels two sector economy which involves the household and the firms three sector economy which in, which involves house government and firms and four sector economy which involves household government firms and the rest of the world so this circular flow 
of income is with the external sector so it involves rest of the world what is the meaning of rest of the world rest of the world means all the countries all the countries except domestic country right so if we talk in the context of india all the countries of the world all the countries of the world except india they become part of the rest of the world so we can say all the foreign countries they are part of the rest of the world right so this is where external sector comes into picture rest of the world so all the transactions which are happening with rest of the world they are either in form of import or they are in the form of export right so we will be importing those items in which we are not good we don't have the good manufacturing or our cost of production is high and we will export those items where our cost of production is low or where we have very good uh, domestic manufacturing facilities now external sector so it deals with export and import of goods so goods here means the visible items services this means the invisible items and the financial capital financial capital this can be in the form of uh, foreign direct investment or in the form of loans just like external commercial borrowing bank loan etc right so we will discuss about all these items in detail in the subsequent slides you just need to understand that there can be movement of goods services and the financial capital and this movement is covered in the external sector now balance of payment balance of payment what is the balance of payment what is the balance of payment basically all the transactions which are happening between india and rest of the world they need to be recorded they need to be recorded right so they need to they need to be recorded so that we can understand that what is the status of india's economy vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world so this recording happens and during this recording the different uh, calculations are done right different calculations are done so this recording of all the transactions all the economic transactions between one country and rest of the world this this recording this systematic recording is called balance of payment right so balance of payment basically represents the systematic record of all the economic transactions which happen between the domestic country and rest of the world so th those transactions are part of the you know those transactions are recorded and they are called and that that record is called balance of payment so a country has to deal with other countries in respect of the following either it can be in the form of visible items visible item means physical goods which are exported and imported or it can be in the form of invisible items which can be in the form of services for example transport services medical services or it can be in the form of capital transfers capital transfers which are concerned with the capital receipts and capital payment right so visible item invisible item and the capital transfers these three uh, type of transactions are covered in the balance of payment now please see this diagram and this diagram will make you uh, you know give you a little bit clarity about the overall kind of transactions which happen between the two countries so this is the balance of payment this balance of payment can have two major type of transactions one is the current account transaction another is the capital account transaction what is the meaning of current account transaction current account transaction means those transactions which are either the income or the expenditure of the country so which are resulting into either the income or the expenditure of the country and they are single time transaction also they are one way transaction also so for example uh, for example uh, if we talk about the visible items visible item means the goods so they can be export and import of crude material 
export or import of cards, export or import of mobile, export or import of computer, export or import of gold. Right. So when we are importing the goods, it is our expenditure because we have to pay the money from our pocket. And when we are exporting the goods, it is our income because we will receive the money from the foreign country. So it is resulting either into receipt or into expenditure. That is why this becomes part of the current account. And this is one way transaction. This is one way transaction in the future. Once the export is done, we receive the payment. There is no future implication. There is no future obligation. Similarly, in case of import, once we receive the goods, we pay, we, uh, pay the amount. There is no further transaction. So this is called single way or one time transaction, right? So this uh, current account, current account basically uh, impacts the income and expenditure. And this current account, it, it has two different categories. One is the visible, visible means the goods, which can be seen from eyes, which are tangible, right? So crude oil, car, mobile, computer, their import and export that is covered in the visible category, right? And the comparison between the export and import of these goods is called balance of trade. Balance of trade. So balance of trade is basically comparison between the amount of export and the amount of import of the visible goods, right? If the export is less than import, then this is called trade deficit. So trade deficit means when the visible import is more than the visible export. Similarly, vice versa. That is, if the export is more than import, then this is called trade surplus. This is called trade surplus. So balance of trade represents net difference between the import and export of the visible items. Another, another uh, major category is the invisible. Invisible means which cannot be seen from the eyes, right? Which cannot be seen from the eyes. The first category is the services, non-factor income, right? Non-factor income. So this income is not from the factor of production, but this is because of the supply of some services. For example, financial services, software services. We sell the financial services. We sell the software services. That is export of services. Or we can import these kind of services or other kind of services right so this is services then we have incomes this is also called as the factor income factor income so friends for your information let me tell you i am giving you a broad overview through this diagram however we will discuss all of these things in the independent separate slides in detail so that you can be conceptually very very strong so don't worry i will discuss each and everything in detail again also but you you please focus you please understand here try to understand each and every aspect in detail right so income means factor income uh, it can be in the form of profit for example indians they have invested some amount in the outside company in the foreign company so the profit which will be coming from that company that will be become part of the profit here or vice versa is also possible it is quite possible that any american has invested the money into the indian company and the profit of indian company going to the american person so in that case this profit will also be the outflow of profit right so in the first case this was the inflow of profit in the second case this is the outflow of the profit then we have interest interest is on the loan so profit was on the investment into the company interest is upon the loan or bonds or similar kind of securities similarly they can be dividend when uh, the shareholding of any person is less than 100 percent then the amount of profit which is received from that particular company that is called dividend so if the share is 100 percent in any company then th that is profit if the share is less than 100 percent then that is called dividend so profit interest and dividend all this become part of the income Third is the unilateral transfers. This is also called as the unilateral transfers or simply transfers. So in case of transfer, there is no reciprocal transaction. That means in return of the donation, there is no return transaction. In return of the gift, there is no return gift. And in return of the remittances, there is no return gift. There is no return transaction. So when we combine the services, income and transfer, all of these three combined, they are basically invisible. This invisible can have, again, it can have the deficit or it can have the surplus. It can have the deficit or it can have the surplus. So if 
outflow of money is more than inflow of money combinedly from all these items then that is uh, invisible deficit otherwise there is invisible surplus so this was all about the current account this was this was all about the current account in this current account for all these transactions combinedly both for the visible and invisible if for the visible and invisible combinedly there is more outflow of money than inflow of money from outside country then that is current account deficit right so current account def deficit means the outflow of money outflow of money is more than the inflow of money because of the current account transactions so that is current account deficit coming to the capital account what is the meaning of capital account so capital account means those transactions capital account transactions means those transactions which impact the assets and liabilities right so current accounts transactions are those transactions which impact the receipt and income capital account transactions are those transactions which impact the assets and liabilities what is the meaning of assets and liabilities so for example uh, some american person is investing into indian company so that becomes fdi so that becomes the asset of american person into india or vice versa for example rajan tata he invest in some american company so that becomes his asset the shares that he mr rajan tata is buying in the american company that becomes his asset or in the future in the future uh, there is one more transaction possible that is loan loan right so when we receive the loan it is our liability and another person's assets and vice versa in future when we will return the loan it will reduce our liability so the point is that either asset or liability either asset or liability one of them are impacted because of the capital account transactions and they are long duration in nature they are having the long term nature they are having the long term nature again this capital account they are trans they are classified into first the investment second the loan and third the bank account transactions investment loan and the bank account transactions the investment it can be either in the form of foreign direct investment or in the form of foreign uh, foreign portfolio investment so this this is fpi now right earlier it was fii now it is fpi loan it can be either the government loan or it can be the commercial loan and banking account can be because of the nris non resident indian all of these things we are going to discuss in detail in the subsequent slide so that your concepts are much more clear you just and try to conceptualize try to uh, you know have a overview of this chart so that you can understand the subsequent concept in much more easier manner so till now we have covered current account transaction and capital account transaction in the current account there can be deficit and surplus similarly in capital account also there can be uh, surplus and deficit so far the if we see the pattern of india in india mostly there is current account deficit why is that because india is a developing country india needs lot of imported goods technology machinery latest services so because of that because of the india being a developing country india needs lot of imported items so there is always a current account deficit however on the capital account because india is having very good investment opportunities therefore the foreign foreign investors they are coming into india and they are investing their money in the form of uh, foreign investment or in the form of loans so because of these because of that the capital account is always in surplus so this uh, current account deficit is compensated by the capital account surplus this is the you know normal trend as far as the indian economy is concerned now this is the bop statement balance of payment statement so you just have an overview of all these transactions i am giving you 1 minute just have an overview of this statement and then we will discuss each item of this statement in detail
सो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज द मॉडल ऑफ बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट स्टेटमेंट नाउ वी विल डिस्कस ईच एंड एवरी लाइन ऑफ दिस स्टेटमेंट फर्स्ट लाइन इट रिप्रेजेंट्स एक्सपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स राइट सो दिस इज टॉकिंग अबाउट एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स नोट द एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ सर्विसेस राइट सो इट डज नॉट टॉक अबाउट द एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ सर्विसेस देन सेकेंड लाइन इज इम्पोर्ट import again this is import of goods not the import of services so please be careful only and only goods and this item number 3 item number 3 is the difference between item number 1 and 2 so difference between item number 1 and 2 this is trade balance now this trade balance this can be of two types either it can be trade surplus or it can be trade deficit so in case the export is more than import then this is trade surplus second in case export is less than import then this is trade deficit right दिस ट्रेड डेफिसिट और ट्रेड सरप्लस दिस रिप्रेजेंट ट्रेड बैलेंस फ्रेंड्स देर इज एन ऑल्टरनेटिव नेम गिवन टू दिस ट्रेड बैलेंस विच इज मर्चेंडाइज बैलेंस सो इफ यू सी द टर्म ट्रेड बैलेंस और यू सी द टर्म मर्चेंडाइज बैलेंस बोथ आर वन एंड सेम ओनली सो डोंट बी कंफ्यूज don't be confused because both the term represent the same thing that is the difference between the export of goods and the import of goods right if we talk about india in india this export of goods is always less than the import of goods and what is the reason for that the reason is that we are important we are import dependent nation we are a developing country that means we have to import technology we have to import uh, the latest luxury products and not only these two but most importantly we have to import crude petroleum product crude oil and we have to we have to import the gold so this gold and crude oil they are the two largest item of import two largest item of import and we are importing lot of machinery etc because we want to uh, we want to develop huge manufacturing base so we need high amount of machinery and the capital items right that is why import is always more than the export export the share of export in the world trade is very very meager this is just 1.64% so this 1.64% is very very less right so the population of india is approximately 17% of the world population however the share of world export is just 1.64% of the world trade which is not a uh, which is not a very good uh, which is not a, at a very good level right so why exports are less exports are less because first of all our quality is not up to mark secondly our prices are comparatively high because our our technology is not yet yet very very good and there are many other reasons for example the total documentation time that is taken in the india is very very less in the same time the government has come up with different schemes for example nirvik scheme in the nirvik scheme the government is trying to promote the exports so government is taking many steps to increase the export we will discuss more about this in the subsequent slide so i hope the point number 1 2 and 3 are now clear to you coming to the point number 4 so point number 4 represents invisible right invisible and is this invisible this is having three different items the first item is non factor income or this is also called as the services trade or trade in services that means we are exporting the services for example financial services software services etc and we are also importing the services 
right we are also importing the services so the net net of export and import of services that amount is given over here in the form of non factor income so this is also called as services trade right so the trade of goods becomes trade balance and the trade of service becomes non factor income balance now <clears throat> the next item income so this income represents factor income so when we hear the term factor what is the meaning of factor so factor here means the factor of production factor of production so what are the different factors of production factors of production we have already discussed in the initial lectures so factors of production include labor entrepreneur uh, capital machinery and land so whatever income is earned by these factors which that comes over here so here we include profit profit on entrepreneurship interest interest on capital dividend dividend on the ownership right so profit interest and dividend these are the diff three different transactions which are covered in the factor income the third third item is private transfers private transfers or this is also called as unilateral transfer unilateral transfer this private transfer they are in the form of donations gifts remittances right so donations for example india gives donation to small countries like bhutan sri lanka right gift so india might give some gift to a small country remittances so remittances are sent by uh, sent by the people working outside india so for example if some person is working in saudi arabia saudi arabia the person will be sending some um, income into india to his his or her hometown right so that kind of income is called remittances friends all these item whether this is non factor income income uh, factor income or private transfer we will be writing both the debit item and the credit item that means we will be looking into the amount which is going from india to outside india and the amount which is coming from outside india to inside india right so both kind of transactions will be considered and the net of both the net of both will be uh, written over here so these figures will be net so the word net here means net of inflow and outflow net of inflow and outflow if outflow of money is more than inflow then this is deficit if out if the inflow is more than outflow then this is surplus so till now we have covered point number 1 2 3 and 4 in the four there are three point a b and c right so point number 1 2 3 they are combinedly called as in sorry they are combinedly called as visibles and point number 4 this is this is called invisible if we total the visible and the invisible if we total the visible and invisible we get current account balance we get the current account balance now again this current account balance this can be again either it can be surplus or it can be deficit if we talk in terms of india in india this current account is mostly in deficit because our imports are more than export as far as the merchandise trade is concerned so our import of goods is very high because of the crude oil and the gold our export is very less however we are able to compensate this merchandise deficit from the services surplus so we are a very good service exporter india is one of the leading service exporter and because of that whatever deficit we are having in the merchandise trade we can compensate that through the services surplus so this was all about the current account so overall in india mostly there is current account deficit in the recent economic survey this has been mentioned that between 2009 to 2014 
the current account deficit was very very high this was hovering between 3% to 5% that means very very high however after 2014 till 2019 that is in the last 5 years this this deficit has been quite under control so it has been hovering between 2% to 1% so this is a very good good aspect what is the reason why this current account deficit has been declining the reason is very simple 2016 onwards for the next 2 years the oil prices came down sharply the crude oil prices came down sharply because of the sharp decrease in the crude oil prices we were able to reduce our current account deficit right so this this statement i have discussed but i will also show you everything that i have discussed in the in the language form in the subsequent slide now coming to the item number 6 item number 6 is external assistance this external assistance is nothing but the loan taken by the government so this is basically the loan taken by the government the go loan can be either from some country or it can be from some multilateral agency for example world bank for example international monetary fund right so both kind of loan are considered so this external assistance basically considers the loans then we have commercial borrowing this commercial borrowing you you must have heard about the term external commercial borrowing ecb this ecb is in news frequently so this ecb external commercial borrowing basically represents the amount of loan taken for commercial purposes so it can be in the form of supplier's credit the supplier of the goods has given some payment relaxation or it can be in the form of buyer's credit the buyer of the goods has invested some amount or it can be in the form of bank credit the bank has given some amount of credit to the to the uh, businessman and there are many other forms but the minimum duration of this loan should be at least 3 years so minimum loan loan amount should be 3 years and this loan is to be given by the non resident person only so we will take any loan into the category of external commercial borrowing only and only when this is given by the this is given by the non resident person right so external commercial borrowing this is the item number 7 then we have short term debt short term debt so this short term debt is basically any debt which is having the maturity or repayment time of less than 1 year so for example the government takes the loan for 10 years right so government has taken the loan for 10 years for the initial 9 years this loan will be classified into item number 6 that is the external assistance and in the 10th year that is in the last year when the repayment time is less than 12 month when the repayment time is less than 1 year in that year that loan will be classified into item number 6 so this uh, sorry item number 8 this item number 8 represents that this amount is repayable by the government within this year only so this shows the current year uh, uh, liability this shows that this amount has to be paid immediately so government will arrange this amount immediately right so this short term debt or which is having the maturity of less than 1 year friends all these figures so all these figures are on an actual basis you have to understand so you must have uh, heard about the budget in the budget we have current account and capital account also but that current account and capital account is for the projected time for the coming one year so those are the budgeted figures but in this balance of payment we are talking about actual figure why actual figure because this balance of payment represents systematic record of all the economic transactions which happen between a country and the rest of the world during a particular year so this systematic record of all the transactions which are happening that means which are actually happening in reality in actual so all these figures we are taking on an actual basis this is very very important so that you can differentiate that in the budget the capital and 
current account item are the budgeted one and in the external sector in the balance of payment they are the actual figure which have already happened in the last one year now coming to the next item coming to the next item that is banking capital so some of the amount is coming through the bank also there are a lot of non-resident indians who are depositing the money into india so this is called non-resident deposit they are opening different type of account we will discuss about nri banking in the next session but here you just understand that they are depositing their money into india right they are depositing their money into india so that money comes in this form and they can also take out their money so the net of amount we have, which we have received as deposit and the amount which we have repaid the net of both we are taking over in the non resident depositors now item number 10 foreign investment right so this is foreign investment this foreign investment can be either in the form of foreign direct investment or in the form of foreign portfolio investment so it can be either fdi or it can be fpi fdi foreign direct investment this is for the long term the purpose of the investor is to run the business and earn the profit in the long term they will be doing the technology transfer management practices transfer experience transfer so the purpose in the foreign direct investment is not to earn the money in the short term but to run the business in the long term and earn the profit in the long term so this fdi is always preferred than the fpi this fpi foreign portfolio investment this represents the amount which has been invested into the stock market into the stock market in case of listed company if the shares of a company are held to the extent of less than 10 percent if the investment is less than 10 percent in a listed company then only this is for part of the foreign portfolio investment so the main point you have to understand about the foreign portfolio investment is that this money is invested for a very short period of time the purpose is to earn the quick money so they will fly by night and they will come by night that is why this is also called as the hot money so if they they think that india's stock markets are improving they will invest their money tonight and tomorrow they will take back the money this this behavior makes this foreign portfolio investment very very sensitive very very volatile therefore for the long term perspective this foreign portfolio investment is not considered to be much beneficial but still we have to really uh, get a lot of fpi because we want to increase the foreign reserves and definitely it is also a very good source of funding next item is other flows other flows are those items which are not able to cover over here so there are many items because of the time lag in the recording so as i told that this balance of payment is written on an actual basis but it is quite possible that the date on which this account is being prepared on that date we do not know the old transactions but to match the entire statement to match the debit and credit side to match the debit and credit side we have to uh, you know we have to use some figure and that figure is called other flows item number 12 is capital account total so the capital account total is the total of item number 6 to item number 11 now again capital account means those transactions which are impacting the assets and liabilities base of the country assets and liabilities base of the country then we have item number 13 errors and omissions errors and omissions so uh, there is a possibility that some of the transactions might might have missed because of the uh, failure to record them because we don't have proper accounting system because our economy is unorganized so there are different set different reasons because of which some transactions may have missed so those transactions we are covering in the errors and omissions finally we have the item number 14 which is balance of payment so this balance of payment is the total of item number 5 that is the current balance item number 12 that is the capital balance item number 13 that is the errors and omission so the totality of 5 plus 12 plus 13 is balance of payment this balance of payment it can be either the surplus or it can be deficit right so if if, if this balance of payment is surplus that means 
our inflow is more than outflow that means we have received foreign exchange into india that means our reserves will increase right so can you see if the if there is balance of payment surplus it will lead to increase in the reserve and in case this bop is in deficit that means the outflow is more than inflow that means our foreign exchange reserve will decrease right so bop deficit has the impact of reduction in the foreign exchange reserve decrease we will discuss the concept of foreign exchange reserve in the subsequent session and last time item is the reserve reserve increase or decrease so reserve increase or decrease is happening because of the balance of payment because of the balance of payment right now this entire statement it is further classified into two kind of transactions so please listen carefully please listen carefully i am repeating this entire statement is further divided into two categories of transactions one is automatic transaction so all these transactions from number I, number 1 to item number 14 they are automatic transaction because in this case we are just recording the transaction we are just recording the transaction which have already been happening item number 15 that is change in the reserve this is the accommodative transaction this is the accommodative transaction that means we have adjusted the amount of reserve because of the other transactions which happened during the year so reserve is a balancing figure reserve is a impact you know reserve is the impact of all the other transactions happening in in the country so item number 14 is called also called as the accommodative transaction we will discuss automatic and accommodative transaction in the subsequent session in detail i hope this balance of payment is very much clear to you from this discussion of 20 minute you will be able to solve at least 15 to 20 questions which have appeared in the last 20 years right so if if you feel that you are confident then you should start practicing the previous year question i will also discuss the previous year question in the next session right so friends the discussion that we did so far from that discussion we can conclude that the components the components of bop statement they include number 1 the current account transactions number 2 capital account transactions number 3 reserve account that is the foreign exchange reserve then errors and omissions so these are the four major categories of the component as far as bop statement is concerned now we will discuss each one of them in detail before that let us see this this statement from the economic survey 2019 20 so the latest economic survey that was released in the month of january 2020 so from that survey we can see the first the first item is current account inside the current account we have export we have import and the net difference of export and import com comes out to be trade balance right then we have invisibles the in in the inside the invisibles we have services we have income we have transfer and the goods and services balance then we have current account balance then inside the capital account we have uh, uh, external assistance we have external commercial borrowings we have short term credit banking capital and uh, non resident deposit foreign investment fdi portfolio other flows errors and omission overall balance finally reserve change increase or decrease so in this you can see that in the latest economic survey this format has been there and this is what we have been studying so far so this format is basically uh, coming from the economic survey 2019 20 and this is the format that we are discussing right now so if we want to define balance of payment so the definition has been given by kindel burger so this 
person has said the balance of payment of a country is a systematic record so this is a record of all so all here means both the private sector transactions and the government sector transactions record of all economic transactions between the residents of the reporting country so in our case it can be India so between India and residents of foreign countries during so this account is belonging to a particular period of time during a given period of time so normally this is annual and also quarterly right so we are calculating this on an annual basis as well as on a quarterly basis it is a double entry system of record double entry system that means there will be entry both on the debit side and the credit side all economic transactions between the residents of the country and rest of the world carried out in a specific period of time when we say a country's balance of payment we are referring to the transactions of its citizens and the government right so this point means that we are referring to all the economic transactions whether these transactions are done by the private sector or by the government sector so the transactions done both by the private sector and the government sector we are including both kind of transactions next what are the important features of balance of payment first of all it is a systematic record of all economic transactions between one country and rest of the world it includes all transactions including visible as well as invisible it relates to the relates to the period of time generally it is on an annual basis it adopts the double entry bookkeeping system it has two sides credit side and debit side so please please be attentive over here please understand this thing very carefully so it has it adopts a double entry bookkeeping system it has two sides credit side and debit side receipts are recorded on credit basis right so credit side means the receipts and the payments are recorded on the debit side so payment basically means the debit side so both sides are very very important both sides are are to be considered then only we call is a double entry system of accounting now what is balance of trade so balance of trade is nothing but the difference between export of goods and import of goods so the difference between export of goods and import of goods this difference is called balance of trade so the difference between country's imports and its export balance of trade is the largest component of a country's balance of payment right so this balance of trade this is also called as the balance of merchandise trade when exports are greater than imports so when exports are greater than imports then balance of trade or BOT is favorable right favorable means this is also called as surplus and if imports are greater than export if imports are greater than exports then this is unfavorable or we also call it deficit now what is the difference between balance of trade and the balance of payment right so i am discussing these small small topics because there is a possibility that questions can come from these small small topics so the pay balance of payment takes to, into account all the transactions all all means whether current account or capital account in the current whether visible or invisible so all the transactions are taken care of 
all the transactions are taken care of. The balance of trade takes into account all the trade transactions with the rest of the world. So here the trade of goods that means the import and export only right. So balance of trade is a component of the balance of payment. So here we can see the difference between balance of payment and balance of trade. Balance of trade it is a very broad term because it includes all the transactions whether they are visible, invisible or capital. This is a narrow term because it includes only visible items, only and only visible items. It is always, it always balances itself, right? So balance of payment, it always has an impact of zero because if there is deficit, then uh, foreign exchange can be paid. If there is surplus, then foreign exchange can be increased. So in any case, foreign exchange can be adjusted and balance of payment is always balancing because the payment is equal to receipt or debit side is equal to credit side. So in any case, this they, they will be balancing just like the balance sheet of any entity is balanced. Similarly, this balance of payment, this balance of payment is also a kind of balance sheet of the country. So this is also a kind of balance sheet of the country and this has to balance itself. Now, balance of payment is equal to current account plus capital account plus minus balancing item that is error and emission. In case of BOT, it can be favorable or unfavorable and BOT is equal to export minus import. Now what are the main factors behind the BOP? First of all, conditions of foreign lenders. So foreign lenders, if foreign lenders are good, then they can supply a lot of capital into the country economic policy of the government so if the economic policy is to attract fdi to promote export to reduce import then that will be reflected in the balance of payment all the factors of bot since bot is part of the bop therefore all the factors of bot always become part of the bop now what are the main factors which affect the balance of trade first is the cost of production right so uh, before discussing the factors let me ask you in the balance of trade there are two items one is the export another is the import so what are the factors which can impact the volume of export and import into india or from india so they can be they can be uh, impacted by prices of goods if the prices of goods are available you know which are the, the goods which are available outside india the prices of those goods are very less then we will import in if 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 it is a reverse case that is the price in india is very less as compared to the world so in that case we can export right so that price will be dependent upon cost of production so cost of production is dependent upon labor cost interest cost and other production costs second is availability of raw material third is exchange rate fourth is prices of goods manufactured at home following are the main factors which affect bot one is cost of production another is availability of raw materials then we have exchange rate and then we have prices of goods manufactured at home so these are the bop versus bot transactions <coughs> now what is the importance of balance of payment so we have been discussing this term so much why at all we are discussing this term why at all this is so important so the importance of balance of payment first of all bop records all the transactions that create demand for and supply of currency so we can actually see that from where the currency is coming and to where the foreign currency is going so here the currency basically means foreign currency right so the demand for so demand for foreign currency arises because of the import if if we know that how much is the import 
we can actually plan that in the next one year how much currency do we need so here i would like to take an example of 1991 bop crisis so in 1991 there was balance of payment crisis at that time we had the foreign exchange reserve only equivalent to the payment of just two weeks import so then we declared that we are in crisis because if we default in paying the foreign exchange dues then we will be called defaulter country and we will not be getting any amount as borrowing from any anybody in the world right so coming back to this BOP records all the transactions that create demand for that is import and X supply of that is exports judge economic and financial status of a country in the short term right so what is the economic status what is the financial status if we are doing good then there should be BOP surplus if we are doing bad then they, they, there are chances that BOP deficit will be there if we are doing good in on, on front of the uh, export then there will be current account surplus and vice versa the BOP may confirm trend in economies international trade right so whether international trade is increasing whether international trade is decreasing whether what is the share of India in the total exports of the world what is the share of India in the total imports of the world so that trend can be seen and exchange rate of the currency why our exchange rate is increasing is it because of the high demand or is it because of the less supply why why the cost of imported goods is increasing or decreasing so all these trends we can see this may indicate policy shift of the monetary authority of the country so depending upon the BOP deficit depending upon the condition of export the RBI or the monetary authority it can decide its policy how is that we will see in the subsequent slide in this session only now general rule in the BOP accounting first if a transaction earns foreign exchange right earns means we receive the foreign currency then it will be considered to be credit item and it is recorded as a plus item if a transaction involves spending spending means payment if a transaction involves spending of foreign currency it is a debit and it is considered to be a negative item so very very simple receipt means credit or plus spending or payment means debit or negative item so this is very very simple funda so coming back to the various components of a BOP right so first component is current then we have capital account then we have reserve then we have errors and omissions now let us come back to this diagram that we discussed right so we have current account inside the current account we have visible item inside the invisible item we have services income and transfers now let us see the current account balance the current account balance so what is the meaning of current account balance the transactions which impact the income and expenditure side which are short term in nature which are single way or one way transactions so BOP on current account is a statement of actual please be careful as I already discussed this balance of payment indicates actual transactions actual receipts and payments in short period it includes the value of export and import of both visible and invisible there can be either surplus or deficit right so in this diagram we can see overall they can, there is a possibility of both surplus and the deficit in the, deficit in the current account so there can be surplus in the current account or there can be deficit in the current account so both possibilities are there so it includes the value of export and import of both visible and invisible goods they can be either surplus or deficit in current account the current account includes export and import of services interest profit dividend is unilateral receipts payment from tour abroad BOP on current account refers to the inclusion of three balances the merchandise balance or balance of trade services balance and unilateral transfer balance now India's top five trading partners so this this thing I have taken from the economic survey of 
the top five trading partner first of all what is the meaning of trading partner trading partner means any country with whom we are doing the export and import right now how do we determine top five for determining top five we we take the total amount of export and import so we add the total amount of export and import which india has done with a particular country total amount of export and import which india has done with a particular country and we compare that with the total foreign trade of the country for of the india right so the total for example uh, for example we take about usa so for example india's total foreign trade or india's total export and import is 100 rupees now out of this 100 rupees the value of total export and import done with the usa is 11.3 so this comes out to be 11.3 percentage in case of usa similarly china uae saudi arabia hong kong you just need to remember usa is the top largest top or largest trading partner second largest is china and third largest is uae so we have usa we have china and we have uae now what are india's top five import items first is crude petroleum second is gold and third is petroleum products you should always know top three items crude petroleum gold and petroleum products india's top five exports petroleum products precious stones and drug formulations and biologicals so these are the three top most export items you can see petroleum products are in the first place as far as export is concerned in the third place as far as the imports are concerned now current account balance if the trade balance is positive this is called favorable balance of trade if the trade balance is negative this is called unfavorable balance of trade or this is also called as trade deficit this is also called as trade surplus right and this is basically we are talking about visibles only right so this thing we are talking about the visibles only So coming back, these two are basically visibles, then we have invisibles, we have invisibles. So invisibles record the receipts and payments with respect to A. Services B. Income C transfer services or non factor income so export and import of services also called as non factor services or non factor income income from investment profit and income generated through employment right so we have interest profit dividend salaries etc right so this income is basically representing factor income right i am moving a little bit speedily because i have already discussed all this point earlier so just consider that this is a kind of revision for you at the same time don't skip the session right so don't think that you have already covered everything there are few points which will keep coming in between the discussion itself so my 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 recommendation is that you should not skip this session don't think that you have already covered so you you can skip this session even if you know everything still you can consider that this is happening this, this lecture is a basically revision part transfers transfers includes gifts grants which do not have any liquid pro quo so there is no reciprocal transaction there is no quid pro quo this is called transfers or unilateral transfers now 
let us see the trade deficit as a percentage of GDP. So this orange bar indicates trade deficit as a percentage of GDP. This data has been taken from the latest economic survey of 2019-20 which came on the 31st of January 2020. So if we see the trade deficit, this trade deficit in the year 2011-12, this was approximately 10% of GDP. Right. So this kept declining. This kept declining and the lowest was in 2016-17 to the extent of approximately 5%. So in 2016-17 this was just 5% but why because in 16-17 the crude oil prices were declining. The crude oil prices were very very low. So this was a very this was a very favorable situation. After that there has been increase increase and finally in 1920 we are expecting it to be around 7% between 7% to 8%. Another aspect is net services as a percentage of GDP. So net services as a percentage of GDP. Uh, if we see this in 2011-12 this is approximately 4% and there, there is almost similar trend and uh, here in 16-17 there is a decline so overall net services to gdp ratio is not much changed but it has been declining over a period of time which is a cause of concern so net services as a proportion of gdp reflects the net impact of service exports and import on bop right so net services basically reflects the export of services and minus import of services so this is net services. India's net services surplus. So there has been surplus. That means the receipts from the services have been more than the payment for the services. It has been steadily declining in relation to GDP. Right. So this is a cause of concern. We really need to look into that. Was what is the problem? What is missing? Then. Uh, the surplus on net services has been significantly financing the merchandise trade deficit right so on the net services there is surplus in the merchandise trade there is a deficit so this surplus has been compensating this deficit given a steady decline in the net services to GDP ratio the extent of financing will steadily fall unless merchandise trade deficit improves in relation to GDP Now current account, current account balance is equal to trade balance plus invisibles balance. If the current account balance is positive, it is called favorable current account balance. Also known as current account surplus. If the current account balance is negative, it is called unfavorable current account balance also called known as current account deficit. Now. What are the causes of current account deficit? Please listen to this discussion very very carefully because this part has not been covered so far. So if we talk about the causes of current account deficit, why current account deficit is there? So before we start discussing, let us understand what are the components of current account. So in the current account we have the visible, inside the visible we have export and import of the goods. That is one thing. So what are the factors which impact the goods trade? What are the factors which reduce the export? What are the, what are the factors which increase the import? So we have to look upon that, right? So what are the factors which reduce the export? The quality, the poor quality of export, uh, high prices of production. So we have high logistics cost. The economic survey says that logistics cost in India is approximately 13% to 14%. But the average 
of world world average is just 10 percent of the gdp so the logistics cost in india is very high because of that the cost of production increases and because of that increase in the cost of production uh, there is increase in the uh, export price and because of that we, our export is not that much attractive in the world market right so this is one thing why import is high because we are a developing country we need technology we need machinery we need we need capital we our consumption is increasing we are becoming more western uh, oriented so because of that there is lot of import also so import is increasing export is not that much increasing this is on the side of visible now coming to the invisible on the invisible side what are the factors which are impacting the service sector what are the factors which are impacting the uh, unilateral transfers what are the factors which are impacting the factor income so first of all what are the factors impacting the services sector so in india we have been very good provider of the outsourcing and the software services but because of the financial crisis which started in 2008 and which finally resulted into the world of protectionism where every country especially the big countries like usa and uk they want to protect their own manufacturing and the services sector so they have put a lot of restrictions on the import of services from the country like india so this protectionism is impacting the services another problem is that the uh, neighboring developing countries like bangladesh uh, we have malaysia indonesia all these countries are basically becoming the new competitors in providing the low cost services so india's usp has been provided that india was providing low cost services for a long time that because of that only we became the uh, net service provider we became the net service provider but because of the competition which we are facing from the neighboring countries they are also be able to provide the low cost services to the developer countries there has been adverse impact upon the services right so that is about the current current account invisible part now whatever factors we have discussed overall we can divide the factors into two categories one is the structural factor another is the cyclical factor structural factor means that in india's economy there is a structural problem which will take long time to recover which will take long time for in the government to take a step for right another issue is so one category is the structural another category is the cyclical cyclical means they are there but for a very short cycle so cycle can be for a period of four years two years so those are the temporary issues and those temporary issues can be resolved immediately so when we divide all the factors into structural and cyclical it gives an opportunity for the government to look into that which steps can be taken immediately and which step can be postponed right so government action plan can be started the government action plan can be formulated and implemented based upon whether the factor is structural or cyclical so for the structural factor the long term impact the long term steps will be taken for the cyclical the short term steps will be taken now coming to the structural causes so structural causes include first of all under investment our infrastructure is very very poor we are not able to provide cost effective electricity the condition of road is very poor so because of all that the cost of production increases relatively low productivity our labor is not that much skilled right there is there is huge rigidity in the labor laws so because of that the labor productivity is very very low not only the labor productivity but also the technology productivity is also very very low persistently high relative inflation we have been facing this inflation problem for a long time because of the supply side constraint our uh, agricultural infrastructure is very very poor rural roads rural godowns rural markets agricultural markets all these all these uh, uh, the storage system distribution system processing everything is very very weak because of that there is high inflation of raw material when there is a high inflation of the raw material it increases the cost of production when there is increase in the cost of production it leads to the general rise in the price which is nothing but the inflation inadequate r and d and innovation in india our expenditure on research and development and innovation is very very poor 
not only the expenditure but the focus upon the research and development has been really poor emergence of lower cost competition right so as i told you that we have been we have started facing the low cost competition from the neighboring countries like bangladesh malaysia indonesia and other southeast asian countries so these are the structural factors the government should take more investment it should liberalize the labor laws it should focus upon the inflation targeting it should spend more amount on the research and development and it should try to reduce the cost as far as possible so all the steps will be taken for a long period of time these are the structural issues now coming to the cyclical issues what can be the cyclical issues so cyclical issues first of all exchange rate exchange rate can be one thing if now what are the cyclical factors or short term factors first is overvalued exchange rate so we will discuss the concept of exchange rate what is the meaning of overvaluation undervaluation separately however here you just understand that overvaluation of export overvaluation of exchange rate it has adverse impact that it makes our exports expensive so our exports become more costly in the world market and it makes the import cheaper it makes the import cheaper so it increases the import and decreases the export overall it has a negative impact boom in the domestic demand this is also very important reason so in india we are seeing that in, uh, population is increasing we have demand or consumption oriented growth because of this demand or consumption led growth uh, there is lot of consumption happening inside the domestic country only therefore there is no requirement of there is no requirement of export itself so ex exports are reduced because the entire consumption uh, the entire production is consumed in the country only recession in the key export market so this is there so after the 2008 financial crisis there was huge recession in the countries like usa european countries and other developed western countries because of that the exports get reduced slump in the global prices of export this is also possible increase in the demand of imported technology so we are a developing country and we need more and more technology so because of that the imported technology becomes more and we our our imports gets increased now what are the causes of current account surplus so this is just opposite first of all there is surplus of saving and investment so the savings rate is good investment is good second significant long run competitive advantage there is a possibility of long run competitive advantage for example if in, if we talk about india in india we have a advantage in the form of demographic dividend so we have a advantage in the form of demographic dividend our working age population is increasing and dependent population is decreasing right so this demography dividend it can provide us long run competitive advantage as compared to the other countries like japan china and other countries long run rise in the global prices of main exports A structural increase in the net investment income trend rise in the factory productivity then what are the cyclical factors depreciation in the exchange rate depreciation in the exchange rate has a uh, positive impact because it make our export competitive it makes our exports competitive and it makes our imports costly so it reduces the import and increases the export A strong consumer demand in key export markets A strong consumer demand in key export markets cyclical improvement in the terms of trade so terms of trade basically means that we are having more bargaining power because of certain unique things that we may be having fall in the prices of imported energy or component so this is possible when the crude oil prices are decline, declining so for example in india 
in 2016-17 the crude oil prices declined and because of that this fall in prices were there rise in the net inflow of remittances or profit this is also possible so these are the different possible reasons of the current account surplus now coming back we have discussed the current account right we have discussed the current account now we will discuss the capital account so capital account records all the international transactions that involve the resident of a country concerned changing either his assets with or his liabilities to so here the main as the main aspect is that there is an impact over the asset and or liability right transactions in the capital account reflect a change in the stock change in the stock either assets or liabilities this is very very crucial so either it will involve the capital like loan or equity right or it will involve the uh, change in the nri deposit in the banking system etc it is a difference between the receipt and payment on account of capital account it refers to all the financial transactions which happen on the capital account the capital account involves inflows and outflows relating to investment so it will cover the transaction like investment short term borrowings or lending medium to long term borrowing or lending so all the transactions in the form of borrowing lending investment fii fdi ecb uh, bank credit all these are covered in the capital account transactions so now here you can see capital account transactions are a two way and multiple transactions right so two way means uh, that first there will be receipt of the loan and then it will be repaid right so one example is the loan right capital account balance how do we determine first item is the external assistance this is basically the loan taken by the government right from the bilateral and multilateral agencies bilateral means from some other country multilateral means from some other group of countries like uh, sarc it may be world bank it can be imf it can be any other organization so first time is item is the external assistance or the government loan then external commercial borrowing so this is the commercial borrowing this is taken for the business purposes it, it can be in the form of bank credit suppliers credit buyers credit etc non resident deposit so the non resident indians when they are depositing the money into the bank accounts of india so that is called non resident deposit foreign investment it can be in the form of fdi direct investment or it can be in the form of fii fpi sorry foreign portfolio investment and other flows so external assistance means transactions of official government bilateral and multilateral loans external commercial borrowing means commercial loans availed from non resident lenders commercial borrowing means loan transaction by the commercial enterprise non resident deposit means deposit received from the non resident indians foreign investment it can be either in the form of foreign investment fdi or fpi now other flows other flows include what are the other flows in the capital account delayed export receipts leads and lag in the receipt of export funds held abroad and other capital transactions not included elsewhere right so if the exports receipt are delayed so that becomes basically the asset because that amount is due to us but we have not received it so last year it might have come in the current account but because this was pending this therefore this all becomes part of the capital account if the capital account balance is positive then we call it favorable capital account balance if the capital account balance is negative then it is called unfavorable capital account balance so this is again uh, the statement of balance of payment which i have taken from the economic survey i am again showing you so that you can see that whatever we have covered is from the this statement only so we have covered export import trade balance in the invisible we have covered services income transfer in the capital account we have covered ecb external assistance short term credit banking capital no nri deposit fdi fii fpi right and other flows so we have covered till now now we will see the difference between the capital account and the current account so to make this difference more clear let me show you 
uh, in a brief the, disc, the difference between the current account and the capital account. So current account is the representation of the trade balance. Trade balance. So this is concerned more about trade, right? Capital account is the representation of capital investment and expenditure. So this is more concerned about the investment part. This is more concerned about the trade part. This is more concerned about the investment part. So this is more concerned about the import and export. This is more concerned about the investment of capital. Second, how do we measure the fund inflows and outflow of international trade? So it measures that how much is the international trade? It measures how much is the capital being invested in the international uh, so that the international trade can increase when there will be more capital invested into into into, cont into the different countries then definitely the trade will increase next it the, the effect changes in so what is the impact of current account it impacts the net income so as i already told you current account impacts the income and expenditure what is the impact of capital account it impacts the financial account or it, it impacts the balance sheet deals with so it deals with trade receipts and it deals with the capital receipts balance of payment what is the impact current account is one component of the balance of payment and this is also another component of the balance of payment right so in this case there is a similarity now we have discussed current account we have discussed capital account now let us see the fourth portion that is error and omission this is reserve account we will be discussing separately So errors and emission, it means the difference between the debit and credit entries of all transactions. So debit basically signifies the outflow and credit signifies inflow. We have discussed this point earlier also. As data compiled in double entry book, keeping is from various sources, right? So the data that we, we have to take for calculating this export, import, everything, that data is taken from a lot of sources. And there can there are chances of mismatch. There are chances of mismatch. So this mismatch is converted into match through error and omission. So the balancing figure is actually put into the error and omission. So error and omissions, the entries under this head relate mainly to leads and lags in the reporting of transaction. So either the transaction will be will be reported earlier or it will be reported with a delay. So in both the cases, in both the cases. Uh, this will be part, become part of the error and omission. It is of balancing entry. So this is a balancing entry. This is a balancing entry and is needed to offset the overstated or understated components. Overall balance. It is a sum of current account balance and the capital account balance. Right. So overall balance here means the BOP balance. So whether the BOP balance is the surplus or deficit. So it is the sum of current account balance and capital account balance. Balance of payment is equal to current account balance plus capital account balance plus errors and omission. If the balance of payment is surplus, it is added to the foreign exchange reserve, right? So surplus for surplus balance of payment means the receipt of foreign exchange is more than the payment of foreign exchange. So definitely the, in the foreign exchange that we have in the country, the stock of foreign exchange will increase. If the balance of payment is in deficit, that means there will be deduction in the foreign exchange reserve. So in this case, the payment of foreign exchange is more than the receipt of foreign exchange. So definitely this will impact the, this will result into the reduction of the capital, uh, reduction of the foreign exchange reserve. Disequilibrium in the balance of payment. So this will disequilibrium means it can be either in the form of surplus or deficit. A surplus in the BOP occurs when total receipts exceed the total payment. So BOP in here credit is more than debit. So this is BOP surplus. So friends, I am repeating the same thing from different perspectives so that in examination you find any type of question and you can solve that. 
a deficit in the BOP occurs when total payment exceeds the total receipt. So here this is basically BOP deficit. Now the difference between the BOP deficit and the BOP surplus. BOP deficit the country imports more goods and services and capital than its export. So import is more than export. This is how hard is reflected by the BOP deficit. It must borrow from other countries to pay for its import. Definitely if the import is more than export, definitely either the foreign exchange reserve stock will decrease or it will have to borrow from the foreign country. In the short term, this fuels economic growth, right? Because there is import and this import leads to the consumption and also it, at times it also in, increases the technology so this can lead to the economic growth in the short term but in the long term it will have to go into debt to pay for the consumption so in the long term we have to we may have to take the loan to repay this amount BOP surplus that means the country's exports are more than its imports country provides enough capital to pay for all domestic production a surplus boosts economic growth in the short term in the long term it becomes the it becomes too dependent on the ex, uh, export driven growth so this happened in case of china so china was largely dependent upon the exports for its uh, for its growth and because of the over dependence upon the export when there was a financial crisis in the world china was the first country to get impacted now India's balance of payment India's balance of payment so as I already told you that the country like India which is a developing country the BOP deficit is bound to be there so in a country like India a country like India which is on the path of development generally experiences the deficit balance of payment situation this is because so why is this happening because such a country requires imported machines, technology and capital equipments in order to successfully launch and carry out the programs of industrialization. Now what are the reasons for the deficit balance in India? What have been the reasons for deficit balance in India? So normally in India there is a balance of payment in the deficit format. Why? Because first uh, so here I would like to tell you that in 2000 in, in 1990 and 1991 there was a huge balance of payment crisis india was not having the sufficient fund to reap to pay for the two weeks import right so at that time there was a huge huge bop crisis now what was the reason for the bop crisis what was the reason for the bop crisis first of all the government liberalized imports in 1985 right so as I told you in the starting of the session itself that India used to be a closed economy till 1990, 1991 right but in 1985 in the imports were liberalized to some extent because of that the imports increased a lot and we did not have the sufficient amount to pay for the import that is why this balance of payment crisis happened. Second there was Gulf War because of the Gulf War in 1991 the crude oil prices increased the crude oil prices increased then there was rapid industrialization there was rapid industrialization so India was on the path of industrialization after the 1991 we liberalized and privatized our industries because of that there was huge import of capital goods and the technology the invisibles were slow in growth because our our country was not having the skilled manpower then there was devaluation and depreciation of rupee against the importing countries finally in 1991 the crisis happened and even the exports have been less so all these are the reasons reasons for the historical deficit balance in india so here you can see this figure which i have taken from the economic survey india's share in the world exports so in 2011, almost 10 years ago, this India's share in the export was 1.64% of the world trade. In 2018, it remains same. So in between, it has been fluctuating. It went down till 1.57% and a maximum 1.78%. This is a very shameful thing because 
in india we have the population of approximately 16 17% of the world population but this export is just less than 2% of the world export this is a very very poor poor situation now top 10 top 10 export destinations in 2011 12 and 1920 again this figure i have taken from the latest economic survey so the top 10 top 10 export destinations the first destination is USA and the second destination is UAE and the third destination is China. You just need to remember these three names, nothing else. So this is a very factual diagram. Commodity wise ex composition of export. So highest export belongs to the petroleum products. Second highest belongs to the pearl, precious stone and semi-precious stones. So this is true both for the 2011-12 and 2019-20. In both the cases, petroleum products is the highest export and pearl precious stone and semi precious stone is the second highest item now reasons for poor performance of india's export trade why india's exports have been poor first of all the high prices so our prices are high because of the high documentation formalities high transaction cost and also because we want to make the high profit on the export so as I told you, our logistics cost is approximately 13% to 14% of GDP as compared to the average 10% and 9% in the other countries of the world. Poor quality. India, many Indian exporters do not give much importance to quality control. So their products are poor quality and due to poor quality, they are rejected. So this rejection of export consignment is a very natural phenomenon. Poor negotiation skill. So uh, Indian exporters, they lack negotiation skill and because of that, because they are poor trained in the marketing, right? So everyone is an engineer. Every engineer wants to become the businessman. They don't have the training in the marketing. They fail to convince and induce the foreign buyer to place the orders. Because of that, we are not able to get much of the, for, uh, the export orders. Inadequate promotion. For export marketing, promotion is important. Many Indian exports do not give much importance to promotion. A good number of Indian exporters are not, prof not professional in advertising and sales promotion. They do not take part in the trade fairs and the exhibitions. So this trade fair, exhibition, all these things are very, very important if we want to promote our country. Poor follow-up of sales. This is also very very much there. We don't believe in providing the post-sale services. Because of that, our country's products are not much in demand. There are other reasons. First, we have the good domestic market also. So our population is increasing. We are a developing country. Therefore, the consumption is there. We, we are uh, you know consuming more. Our income is increasing. So our purchasing power is also increasing. And because of that, domestic demand is increasing. Therefore, the exports are not increasing. Then there are a lot of formalities which happen over there. Problem of trading blocks. So the trading blocks, they reduce the trade barriers on member nations, but they impose trade barriers on non-members. And India is not a member of most of the trading blocks. So this actually impacts the India's export. Negative attitude. Some of the overseas buyers have a negative attitude towards Indian goods. They feel that Indian goods are inferior goods. So there is a general tendency that the quality of Indian goods is not poor. Because, because of that, their attitude is built up. Then India's infrastructure is poor. Indian exporters, for the Indian exporter, it is very, very difficult to deliver the orders on time. Our port quality, the turnaround time of the ships, everything is very, very poor. Now, what are the causes of disequilibrium in the BOP? Cyclical fluctuation, shortfall in the exports, economic development. So because of the economic development, we are more in the import mode that in the export mode rapid increase in the population this is also very very important structural changes natural calamities so there is a lot of natural calamities happening and international capital movement now what can be the measures to control to this equilibrium of the BOP how we can control the BOP deficit first of all what is the what are the monetary measures in the monetary measure first is the monetary policy how this monetary policy can impact so basically if we want to increase the export the one way to increase the export is to reduce the prices of goods how the prices of goods can be reduced to decrease the 
price is we have to basically control the inflation level the inflation level can be controlled by the rbi therefore this monetary policy the monetary policy is a concerned with money supply so this can control the money supply and carry it in the economy the central bank may expand or contract the money supply in the economy through appropriate measures which will affect the prices and if the prices are decreased our export become competitive and we can increase the export and bop can be controlled bop deficit can be controlled then fiscal policy fiscal policy is government policy on income and expenditure government incurs development and development expenditure it gets income through taxation and non taxation resources depending upon the situation government expenditure can be increased or decreased right so in case there is a huge loan the government is taking for more and more expenditure Uh, in that case the government can reduce the expenditure and control the loan it takes from the outside countries so even the fiscal policy can impact the bop deficit so you can see that this monetary policy and fiscal policy are interlinked with the foreign or external policy then exchange rate depreciation so as i told you we will discuss more about the exchange rate in detail separately but here i will be just touching this exchange rate depreciation concept and the impact so exchange rate depreciation what is the impact of exchange rate depreciation because of this the value of import or the cost of import it increases and the export prices gets decrease so this is the impact right so this is a very positive aspect because of that the import decreases and export increases right by reducing the value of domestic currency government can correct the disequilibrium in the bop in the economy exchange rate depreciation reduces the value of home currency in relation to foreign currency as a result import becomes costlier and export becomes cheaper it also leads to inflationary trends in the economy but this is a very very poor aspect that is it leads to the inflationary trend devaluation so when uh, the government when the government uh, devalues the currency officially through the active intervention then the impact remains same so depreciation happens through the market forces and devaluation happens through the active interaction intervention of the monetary authority deflation deflation can also decrease the prices deflation means decrease in the prices so even the deflation can lead to increase in the export exchange control exchange control so even the exporters they can be directed by the monetary authority to surrender their foreign exchange earning so when foreign exchange earning are deposited with the rbi then they will not be used to buy the imported goods now what are the non monetary measures so till now we have discussed the monetary measure in the monetary measure we have discussed monetary policy we have discussed fiscal policy right and we have discussed exchange rate depreciation we have discussed devaluation we have discussed deflation and we have discussed exchange control now what are the non monetary measures in the non monetary measure first we want we should increase the export how this can be increased we can reduce the export duty duty basically means the taxes right so if the taxes are decreased then the prices of export will decrease and the competitiveness will increase and the demand for the export goods will increase cash assistance and subsidies can be given to the exporters to increase the export goods meant for export can be exempted from all type of taxes right so this basically represent the taxes the government levies should be decreased second import substitution steps may be taken to increase the production of imported substitute this will save the foreign exchange in short run by replacing the use of import by these import substitute so as much as possible we should observe those item which are much in demand and we should establish the manufacturing facility the government has undertaken the project of make in india to ensure that import sub is substituted import control import control should also be there right for import control there are two system possible one is quota system another is tariff system please please understand this system these are some of the unique concept which i have not discussed so far so please be careful quota 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 basically represent some limitation right some limitation some quantitative limitation so under the quota system the government may fix and permit the maximum quantity or value of a commodity to be imported during a given period by restricting import through the quota system the deficit is reduced and the balance of payment position is improved so comment can say that not more than 1 crore mobile can be imported in one year or not more than 100 crores can be spent for buying the 
mobile phone charges so this is how the quota system works tariffs tariffs means the duties so that on the import the duties can be increased on the export the duties can be decreased tariffs are duties or taxes imposed on import when tariffs are imposed the prices of imports will decrease to the extent of tariff the increased prices will reduce the demand for the imported goods and at the same time induce the domestic producers to produce more of imported import substitutes so uh, we have discussed current account we have discussed capital account and we have discussed errors and omissions reserve account we will discuss in the separate and next lesson with this i complete this session i hope that you enjoyed this session this was little bit long session but this was very very informative also